Hello and welcome to this new tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how you can write a simple program that can basically calculate the sum of two numbers. Now, if you are a beginner uh, in programming, then this video is for you because this is a very basic program that requires very basic knowledge. So let's get into this. So the first thing you have to do is have a programming uh, language installed in your computer system. Now, basically, I enjoy using C++ for console programs, especially um, for beginners. So the first thing you have to do is uh, launch your um, programming language. In this case, uh, C++, go to File, go New, select Project, and then we're dealing with uh, console uh, application programs. So we can select console application and then we can give the project a uh, name. So in this case, I'll maybe just say sum, okay, of, okay, two numbers. Something that will be easy for me to remember when I want to retrieve the program. Okay, I'll find a location where you can uh, keep that. Just keep it on the desktop. So easy for me. Okay, basically that's what you get. Um, in C++, the default uh, four headers on top here is usually always um, uh, hash include uh, IO string. So you want to, to include using namespace std. Okay, it's very very important that you include that, and then you can get into the the program. Uh, the many body of the program to say. So the first thing that you have to do is of course declare the data type that you are dealing with. In this case, we're dealing with numbers. So you can declare them as integers, but then the, pro the problem with that is that the program would not accept um, fraction numbers such as 0 0.5. So for me, I would prefer that you get covers that using float. So I'll say float as a data type, then number one, number two, and then we're looking for some, so I'll do that. So basically what I've just done is I've declared memory locations that will accommodate data types of float, meaning that numbers that are integers and also that are fractions. Okay, so the next thing I have to do is give the user the instruction, enter the first number okay the first number in so we'll save number one also give the instruction to enter the second number Okay, so basically what we've done here is give an instruction to the user uh, to enter the first number. So what's going to happen is that the user uh, will see on the screen uh, the statement in between the two inverted commas, which is uh, enter the first number. So the user will know what they are entering. And this command here is basically going to accept that particular value that the user is going to enter. So we declared it as number one. That's why we are also using it as number one. So this, the, the thing that we now have to do is uh, go to processing. How can the program begin calculating that? So sum is equal to, okay. Uh, let's say sum is equal to number three, number one plus number two. Okay, then we can display that. Okay, the sum is equal to sum. If you pay attention to how I've displayed the sum is in two forms. I have displayed the sum is equal to as exactly what will be printed on the screen. And I'm also saying display sum 
and you can see that it's not in inverted commas that simply means that the compiler will go and fetch uh, the value that was found when the two numbers were added and it will be displayed on the screen so that's the difference between the two displays so you have to take note that the two displays are different in such a way that one is fetching the actual value and the other is actually just printing the statement the sum is equal to on the screen okay so uh, that is basically the small program that can do uh, that can calculate the, the sum of two numbers so let's just compile that and it's very important for us to do this because um, when we are compiling the program we are trying to tell the uh, compiler to translate the human understandable form to a machine language so basically what we've just written the instructions we've written the machine cannot understand so we have to translate that not really us but the system is programmed to translate that into um, machine languages okay so that the computer can understand remember the computers only understand zeros and ones so these things that we've uh, written as instructions have to be translated into zeros and ones then the computer will understand the instructions that we've just uh, given it so once it compiles the things that you want to look at and focus is on the errors and the warnings if you get zero errors and zero warnings then you you are good to go to run the particular program that you've just written so in this case uh, it's still compiling so let's just give it a time my computer is a bit slow so as we're waiting for that guys i want to say thank you so much you guys have been awesome you've been supporting me so much uh the family is growing every day i really want to appreciate and thank you so much you guys you continue supporting me like that and I'll continue doing amazing things for you guys thank you so much so now we can look at uh, the errors we have zero and the warnings we have zero so that means that we can now go to run the program okay so we wait for the program so you can see it's saying um, enter the first number so I can enter let's say 5 enter the second number I can say 15 so our answer is basically 20 so you can see right here it's saying the sum is equal to 20. now you if you look at the way i've done it is i've entered integers 5 and 15. so uh, basically this is why i had to declare it for because the program can then accept um integers and also can accept um uh, float values why do i mean by saying float values values such as uh, fractions for example uh, 0.5 plus 0.5 give us one yeah you can see that it's accepting 